venture capitalists would have come to me from the very start. <laughs> Awesome. Thank God for penicillin. All right, so now we've got the round two finalists. So again, when your uh, name appears, please uh, come on down and we'll start the pitching. All right, round two finalists. BJ Umapathy, Natalia Brickner, Daniel Robinson, and Mary O'Grady. Congratulations, guys. Come on down. Woo! You ready? Oh, where are the judges? Oh, all right. So apparently we have some free time. Luckily, I came prepared. So did you hear that the MIT subatomic particle store is having a sale? Electrons and protons are uh, 10 cents a piece. Neutrons, don't charge. Come on, that was funny. That was good. All right. Does anyone know what the speed of time is? Anyone? One second per second. All right. All right, this is my favorite. Two hydrogen atoms walk into a bar. One says, I've lost my electron. The other says, are you sure? The first replies, yeah, I'm positive. Uh, what did the neutrino say to the earth? Roll over Chuck Berry. Okay. <laughs> I don't think that was the punchline, but I'll go with it. Fox plays Marty McFly, rocking his way through the 50s in this clip from the hit movie Back to the Future. Alright, so we'll have a short video introduction. Way back up in the woods among the evergreens, there stood a log cabin made of earth and wood. Okay, Where lived a country boy named okay, Johnny right. Good. Never right, had judges, a learning to write so well. If you play it, you're ready. Judges, ready? Yes. Ready, set, go. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I gotta pay attention to my monitor. Alright. The booth is set. Ready, set, yes. When is a stomachache really appendicitis? When is a headache more than just a headache? Usually to answer this question, we call a doctor. Or worse, we learn the answer the hard way in an emergency room. My Care Apps is a platform for mobile apps that ask you questions, assess your level of risk based on your answers, and provide you with instant feedback. We have already created a mobile application that helps parents assess whether their children with fever are at risk for a more serious condition or not. And if so, it provides those parents with specific talking points to present this risk to their doctor. Our platform can be used to assess risk for diabetes, pneumonia, and many other conditions. Apps can be sold direct to consumer and marketed virally. And any of the millions of smartphone consumers, as well as health plans, are potential customers. We are incorporated, launching our first app in two weeks, and eager for your support. Thanks. <laughs> Um, so, with each of our applications, we're planning on partnering with authorities in their specific medical fields. One of the problems with things like WebMD is that it's essentially just a medical encyclopedia. Our goal is to create specific applications for specific situations with solid authorities in each one. For example, one of the doctors from Boston Children's Hospital is, um, is our authority for and, and supervisor for our first app on fever in children. Thank you, VJ. All right. So who's up next here? All right. Contestant two. You ready? I'm ready. Judges ready? Go ahead. Okay. Timer's ready. Ready, set, pitch! One half of all satellites launched in the past decade weighed less than 200 pounds. If NASA, the military, and commercial companies had used our rocket technology, they could have saved up to 95% on launch costs. 
Our team of MIT and Duke engineers has designed a new rocket engine inspired by the same technology used on steam locomotives. Our design is about the size of a quarter. The entire engine has zero moving parts, and when used in groups, our engines can send a small satellite into orbit. Because our design is so simple, it can be mass-produced, which is where our huge cost savings for the customer comes from. If every small satellite launched in the next decade used our technology, over $1 billion could be saved and used instead to further the industry rather than spent on inefficiencies. We plan to target customers like NASA and communications companies and then work to extend affordable space access to new customers like universities and even the individual. How much money do you need to commercialize this? So our plan in the next one to two years is to have our engine technology ready. And at this point, we can license this to partner companies, bringing in initial revenue from the licensing. So that will pay for our upfront engineering costs. And we predict that to make this engineering, or to make our engine technology ready, we will need between two and five million dollars. All right. Thank you, Natalia. Contestant number three. All right, Daniel, you ready? Mm -hmm. Judges are here and ready. Timer. Ready, set. Yes. <laughs> I think I can predict the Supreme Court. By applying machine learning techniques to existing cases, we can see what features and factors in lower court opinions make Supreme Court justices more likely to affirm or reverse those opinions. A 2002 study using a very primitive version of these techniques already got a 75% success rate. We're using text mining and other advanced technologies. We've already started improving on this algorithm. I want to start a legal technology firm that applies these techniques not just to the Supreme Court, but to a wide range of legal applications, such as profiling judges and juries and predicting the outcomes of motions. These kinds of technologies are already widely used in finance, marketing, and scientific research but not the $200 billion legal industry. We believe that soon these technologies will revolutionize the practice of law, and our firm intends to be on the cutting edge of it. Thank you. Woo! How long until you plan on replacing lawyers with robots? So I'm glad none of my law school professors are here to, to hear this. I sincerely believe that a lot of what lawyers already do can easily be automated, and eventually they can be replaced with just technicians. How does Brown Rudnick feel about that? I'm sorry? How does Brown Rudnick feel about that? Um, I didn't know they were a sponsor until I showed up. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Contestant number four. All right. That's great news, replacing lawyers. All right. That's not what I'm doing. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes. All right. Judges, ready here. Timer. All right. Ready, set. Each year, 1.5 million people receive kidney dialysis in order to live. 300,000 of them are in the U.S. In order to start filtering their blood, these patients must undergo surgery to create a connection to the bloodstream. Unfortunately, surgeries for new connections are required annually when the original connection clogs, costing Medicare a billion dollars. Each year, 55,000 Americans die when they run out of these connection sites. Our device is an implant that has three main benefits over competitors. It creates a connection to the bloodstream that will last the life of the patient, eliminating the need for excess surgeries. It's easily integrated into the surgical procedure, and it could save Medicare a billion dollars each year. We're a team of biomedical engineers from the Johns Hopkins University, and we're working closely with vascular surgeons and interventional radiologists. We have strong IP strategy, and we're currently seeking 2.5 million to further our uh, animal studies and our IP strategy, and our, as well as our prototyping. Our device will revolutionize <laughs> analysis. One of the reasons those shunts are lost is due to infection. Is this going to be a problem with your device? Well, actually, that's one of the things that we're addressing with our competitors. So, yes, infections affect, I mean, that causes 20% of these devices to fail. And so we are looking at that. And actually, one of the reasons for that is because they're putting the needle right into the graft. 
So if you put the needle into the vein, 